So my guess is if you're watching this video, you either own a DRZ400, looking to buy a DRZ400, have a DRZ400 and probably looking to sell it and probably get something else, but you're kind of in that undecided state. Now, I haven't ridden my DRZ400 in quite some time and this is why I decided to create a conversation about the DRZ400E. In fact, I have a lot of bikes and constantly my riding style keeps changing. But one bike really comes to mind all the time and I need to fix it up as fast as I can because I'm going to explain to you why I really think the DRZ400E is all you need and I need to start riding this bike again soon. Now I'm not really going to do a full review of the DRZ400E but more of why I personally think why this bike is still untouched in today's market. Yes, even with all the modern dual sports. Now, keep in mind, I am reviewing the DRZ400E and not the S or the SM. The E model is a way more aggressive model than the S, and yes, I do ride both. Now, the E I'm referring to are the younger years, are anywhere between the 2000, 2002, 2003 mark. I know the E right now is slightly different, but this is going back more to the younger generation of the DRZ400E. So over time, I keep looking for a bike to replace everything I have and yes, even the 701 Husqvarna and the KLX250 and probably even my two-stroke. See, I was considering the KLX 300R, the 2020, of course, and I remember riding it around the parking lot and a guy I met on the trails, I was like, Wow, the KLX 300 feels very light underneath me. And I'm talking about like once you start sitting on it and swaying the bike around back and forth, I was like, wow, this feels very dirt bikey. I mean, it, it is a dirt bike. So I swayed it back and forth and sure enough, it felt as light as a normal dirt bike. And I was thinking, great, I can actually sell my DRZ 400 and the KLX 250 and get the KLX 300R. Now, here I am hopping back on my DRZ400 at the dealership, thinking maybe it's time to trade it in. And as soon as I sat on the DRZ400 again, I just questioned myself. It felt as flickable as the KLX300R, and this was me swaying it back and forth, and I was actually pretty surprised to find myself thinking about this. Reminder, I am never rode the KLX300R or the DRZ400E on very top tight technical single track, but I kept going back and forth between the other bikes, the KLX300R and the DRZ because I was pretty shocked how the DRZ400E felt underneath me compared to the other legit dirt bikes, and yet the other dual sports felt heavier as I was swinging it back and forth and moving it around a bit. Now I've ridden the WR250R and of course the DRZ400E and that day, that dealership had a WR250R, I even sat on that, and for some reason the DRZ400E felt lighter. It's weird. Of course, we all know as soon as you drop the bike, that is when you feel the weight. But here is the thing, the more you ride and the more you ride familiar areas, the less likely you are going to drop the bike. And if you have an off day, you maybe drop it once or twice. Big deal, right? Now, the reason I want to do it all bike is mostly the maintenance. See, I'm very lazy and I know a lot of people can relate as well. Yes, I do force myself to do the maintenance, but I really hate it. I also hate it when things break down constantly or need constant repairs like, for example, the two stroke every 100 hours, you need to change the top end of the TE250i. I mean, it's just basic normal maintenance off the two stroke. Now, here is the shocker, the DRZ400E, not the S or the SM, the DRZ400E feels lighter than the KLX250 on the trails, and I'm not gonna lie, when I'm on it, it feels dirt bikey, except it is a dirt bike that really doesn't require any maintenance and can easily hit 30,000, 40,000 on a single top end and probably even more. And not to mention you can trail hop with ease on the streets like it's nothing. 
Because to be honest, the DRZ400 is better on the street versus all the 250 dual sports and all the plated dirt bikes quote unquote dual sports if that makes sense, like the Beta 500s and such. Now I can only speak for the DRZ400E on double wide trails and not much tough tight single track but this is why i'm making this video i plan on fixing up the basic stuff off the drz 400e you know change up the sprockets to a 1350 and do another review on single track now that i have much more experience and my skill levels have increased a bit and i have quite a few more bikes and i have you know buddies who have other two strokes and other dirt bikes like the ktm 250 exef but here are my true thoughts on why the DRZ400E is still untouched in today's market. Till this day, reliability, you can't really compare it to a traditional dirt bike. Obviously, the DRZ400E is going to outlast almost any dual sport and dirt bike in this market based on the research I have done. I've seen many DRZ400Es actually reach around 40 50,000 miles on a single top end. And although I am looking for a maintenance free dirt bike that is more or less light on your feet, the DRZ400E just keeps coming up because to be honest all the other dual sports that are really light like the KTM or the Husqvarna, they just require way too much maintenance on my end. And sure they are a lot lighter than the DRZ400, but realistically when the DRZ400E is under you, it's not going to make much of a difference on your average trails. I mean, I'm not really riding 5 miles of hell on a DRZ400. And then again, I have seen DRZ400Es on really tough single track out here in Colorado. I've seen videos and I'm like, maybe this is all you need. And of course, not to mention how simplified it is for a fix. You don't have to worry about no damn electronics and you can even still push start this bike. So to top it all off, tell me which dual sport in today's market really matches the power or dirt bikey feel of the DRZ400E. Because yes, to me the DRZ400E feels like a dirt bike versus all the other dual sports in its class. And yes, even more dirt bikey than the CRF450L minus the price tag. In order to get more power and dirt bikey feel of the DRZ400E like it was back then, you will need to spend at least $10,000 on a dual sport KTM or Beta. And yes, the only thing it has going for these bikes is better suspension, 6 gears, EFI, but as far as the suspension goes, it's not by far for the average rider. It is lighter, which to be honest, flicking the DRZ400E around is not much of a difference when you're just sitting on it. And of course, a bit more power, but realistically, you won't use all that power the 500 has unless you are a top pro rider, if that. Or maybe hitting highway speeds or desert races, races or probably a snow bike. Now keep in mind, I was just sitting on these bikes and that's when all these thoughts hit me. I got home, I sat on my TE250i, I sat on all the other bikes I have, and I was like, geez, the DRZ400E just feels light when I'm flicking it back and forth. Anyhow guys, once I patch up my DRZ400E, I'll go ahead and do a thorough review, I'll take it out on single track that's, I'm gonna say fairly tight, and report back to you guys. But as of now, I postponed my purchases of another dirt bike, due to how similar the weight was when I was flicking the bikes around. Anyhow, go ahead and subscribe, hit that bell button so you guys can catch some of the updates that's going to come out in the future. And I'll catch you guys on my next video.